I'm sorry, guys. Groovy, baby. Oh, my. Huh? We're over here tapping in with KWJT, Puget Sound from Space. I'm over here with Corey. Let's You're go. tapping in with Tavares and sliding with Solana. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, huh? Yeah. Let's go. All right, brother. Hey, happy Groovetober to all the groovies at home. Um, let's start it off with a little bit of love. KWJT, thank you for tapping in with that last episode. We truly appreciate you guys at home. Thank you for all the love. Um, big shout out to uh, the Tranquil team. They showed us major love. We were at that uh, Fino uh, hunt party and we got oh, fucked up. Got really, really hot. And uh, they're still doing the damn thing week in, week still out. Tranquil is undefeated. Um, and without a further ado, Ski, let me introduce this week's uh, guest. We got Simon and Tina up in the building. Yes, Welcome. You didn't do what you were supposed to do, though. You didn't say the intro that I thought you was going to do. Oh. <laughs> hey, Washington Groovies. Nah, nah. Hey. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, brother. No, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to. No, I know. <laughs> They seen the tweet, but you know, they'll see the video too. You feel me? We're all here. Thank you so much, you guys. We truly appreciate you guys for uh, pulling up. Fuck this. Um, Yeah, welcome to the Groovy Tapes. Uh, I'm honored. Yeah, super honored. How are the two of you today? We're good. Uh, we got the fellas up really early this morning, so just know they're up. They have coffee. I got uh, them coffee holic. <laughs> We're good. It was a good day. We, uh, that the coffee that I'm always drinking is coffee holics, but now nah, I I kept the kept the cover on today. Uh, what do you mean? You take it off? Yeah, I always take it off. They don't pay us. <laughs> <laughs> I love them though. I'm there every every Saturday. I'm there. Yeah, you can't can't That's do a smart, yeah. I, yeah, you got I try not to do sponsor promo. Yeah, yeah. I used to yell at him for doing uh, free ads in the beginning. And our first episode, hey guys. <laughs> first episode, he would just give shout outs to like what we were drinking, anything. Oh like, I, shout out Modelo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's smart. That's smart thinking. I didn't yeah, think about is. that stuff. Um, but I really want to, so I've been stalking both of your Instagrams for the last couple of weeks um, to prepare for this Instagram and uh, prepare for this interview. Um, so I really wanted to take it back with you, Simon, and like talk about some photography and where your it was that your first love of art, or did you originally start uh, with drawings and paintings? Went way back, bro. Oh yeah, I went. Damn. Yeah. Like, did I archive enough? No, <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Not for court. <laughs> I, like that. I saw the Nikon. I was like, okay, like. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and like his grid is like per like for that time. It was like, damn, Simon should have been out of here off the photography. Uh, crazy. Uh, no, man, I just I just try to express myself in different ways. That was just one of the outlets I had. Like, yeah, you know, I don't. I just like taking photos, man. Like at that time, at least. But I've been drawing and being creative since I was like a little kid. Oh, nice. It's just been like something in me, you know. Yeah. Just try to express myself, whatever it is, like. Through, like, photos or even just dance. Like, I got into dance. Like, just very expressive as a kid. Yeah. But um, just I've always been drawing, trying to, like, make things. I always have ideas. So it's just, like, I need to get it out. Yeah. Did so, you start with, um co like, did you fall in love with comics or uh, cartoons? Did, yeah. did that help fuel it? Yeah, for sure. Like, I was that kid. I was, like, in front of the TV watching cartoons. Just drawing drawing at the, the same time? time. Still like, yeah, I still do it. <laughs> fire. <laughs> That's fire. I can, uh, I never, I always loved art. I'm terrible. I feel like I'm a terrible artist because what I have in my head, I can never, like, put out into the, the world. So I'm always, like, I was always really into it, and then I had to give it up just because yeah. it's, like, it looks like ass. It's, like, it. <laughs> See, and that's I, where everybody gives up, though. Like, yeah. I mean, I started that way too, but I was like, my parents would give me like um, how to draw cartoons. Oh, books. fire! So I would try to learn that stuff, or like, let's say I was like, I was hella into Simpsons, right? Oh, and nice. they would give me like, how to draw Simpsons. So I was like, you, so I would you try learn. to draw and learn all that stuff, and it just like makes it feel good when it's like coming out right. Yeah, and then it just makes you excited. So I just kept drawing. Oh, that's fire! So like the family support too. Like my parents have always been like, into well, you can draw like. 
That's keep going. Do, yeah, keep going. Like they're It's really cute because his mom, when I first like we got together, his mom was like, "I have a box saved of Simon's drawings since he was five years old." He like went out and like we were looking through it. And this dude was drawing himself in the mirror at like eight years old. It looks just <laughs> like him. And but there was some. Little Dragon Ball Z killing and shooting and stuff. Hey, I was very concerned action, about, like, you know? why are you having this stuff? All, I feel like all, of, you know, <laughs> all young, I feel like all young boys, like, at some point draw death. Yeah. Death or guns. It's Dad either or. Shooting, stabbing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, this she is saw that. Like, yeah. I'm a little concerned. I'm like, nah, I'll just really into it. Like, <laughs> it was real up here. It was, yeah. I had yeah. to. such supportive parents that have saved that. So it's like, when you look back, it's like, he has stuff since he was a little kid. And you could tell it's always been in him. That's fire. Um, I wanted, so we were talking about YouTube before um, and the glory days of YouTube when it was like fun and a bunch of skits and singing. Um, that's fu- that's my whole like chat. Like to me, uh, you you actually have met one of the people that I hope to meet, uh, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but Timothy De La Ghetto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like the pinnacle of like, uh, or Tim Chantaransu, let me call him by his yeah. real government. Um, but you were part of a YouTube age. Well, I'm learning. You were part of a YouTube age that I, I really loved and like was raised on. What was it like during those days on YouTube and like the height? I feel like the height of good YouTube. Yeah, it's funny because I think people who see me now, they only see the success of like this foodie thing that's only been happening like a year and a half. But yeah. I've been doing the social media stuff for like since I was little. I was like on MySpace, on YouTube. And at the beginning, like, YouTube was a different world. Like, you didn't need a high-quality camera, a lighting, a backdrop. It was just kind of like you posted something, you singing, you doing whatever, and it was just the community just engaged. So during that time, MySpace was popping, so you post your YouTube on MySpace, yeah. put on Bulletin. Kids probably don't know what we're talking about, but um, <laughs> it was it Don't was worry, cool. kids don't watch the groovy things. <laughs> if they do, we love them. <laughs> um, and then I just, you know... I think just singing on YouTube and doing covers, that, that was so easy to do. It was, my videos is like an Android. It was so blurry. It was like me singing like uh, Asia Cruise, like all this you stuff. But like, like meeting him, it was just, just because we're still in the beginning stages. It was like at the time where I was like, okay, Tim, like we're doing this YouTube yeah. thing. And then I kind of just stopped. And I was like, bro, you're blowing up. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to college. Yeah. Like, it's just, I, you know, but it was just dope to see so many Asians in a realm where people thought they couldn't be in media or entertainment on yeah. TV. Like, they were running YouTube, being singers, and I was like, Facts. I felt like your dreams could kind of come, tr- come true during that time for Asians. It was cool to see. Yeah. Well, that, I'm giving that a big round of applause because that's... <laughs> uh, that was beautiful, and that was, like, a beautiful time there, especially when I was, like, consuming content and, like, learning about the world, like... Uh, depri- like that that whole yeah. era is yeah. like yeah. in like in my heart. Like, crazy. Like, yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> that bedrock the, remix. The, the Filipinos, the AJ Raphael, you have the Bro, Bruce Bro, Jr. Aquino. Bro, Aquino. Yeah. Jr. Aquino. Yeah. Kind of look like Jr. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was really my. Put a big photo. Bro. Put a photo. <laughs> That's really my big bro because I would rock through the uh, hallways with a ukulele. Uh, You're that dude. Yeah. Yes. I was that dude. Yeah. That's, That's why the ukulele's by his side. You know. That's that's, one. That's how you pull them, huh? Uh, <laughs> but you got the voice for it? You know, no, I don't. No. So you why are you like, lying? Why are you... Ke- bro, no, back then I used to hold sing. on, hold on. Why are you capping on the pod right now? Like, you can... <laughs> like, you, <laughs> like, you can... Like, 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 you, like, like, you play lemonade? Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> like, you can bust it down. <laughs> Because that was my personal... <laughs> <laughs> my talent knowing I'm well, we in pain, yeah. Together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but... Uh, no, I definitely was that uh, dude in the hallway just strumming away on the on the uke. So, man, uh, shout out to those earlier uh, creators because I definitely mm-hmm. resonate with what you guys are talking Led about. Led for sure. Um, Facts. It kind of just set like a comfortability for me uh, in this space, uh, I feel like, just to uh, touch on that. Um, I want to switch it up. Uh, is a... Uh, is uh, Sang Woo the uh, ultimate get, uh, bad getter? <laughs> Squid Game? Yes, Sang Woo, the man. He really, uh, he did his thing, I get it. You know, he played the game. He played the game. What if someone didn't watch it yet? Are we... Oh no! I don't care. We, we do. We do. I do. Spo- I love spoilers. How do, I don't well, know if your fan base will get mad at you for spoilers. I mean, okay, it's well, out, it's well, we'll, we'll, retract, we'll retract it real quick. No, hey guys, this I is a little it. Squid Game spoiler. Um, but yeah, uh, man, <laughs> he really tell me, tell me, the game. 
That shit was uh, the marbles, though, dude. The marbles broke my heart. Honestly, broke I, he's the worst <laughs> human being. Like, but did he not do? A f- Everyone came there to win, right? No, they they sure did. Everybody had their circumstances uh, within the game. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is, is Sangwoo is like the most like the the worst person. They act nice. They they want to yeah. bring you in, right. mm-hmm. and then they have ulterior motives yeah. at the end of the day. Bro, switched up so quick. And, you know, there was foreshadowing to that, but, like, you know, just for how they built that character, it was, like, really interesting for me to see because this is, like, a, a white-collar dude. Like, right. mm-hmm. he's, like, something you you aspire to be. This is right. what, like, people are, like, oh, like, this is, he went to college. He, he's, he's, he's the pride of the neighborhood. And he's, he's like, a scammer. Though. He's a scammer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Scammy whammer. Yeah. Like, it's a show, like, money just man. brings the evil out of you. Yeah. Oh. Is, do you think that was the underlying message of the of the uh, show? Uh, I found it interesting the way Koreans pr- uh, portray like that system, that flow of like how the cast is like how there's middle class, how there's like the lower class. I was um, reading this article. They were saying it's a reflection of capitalism in mm-hmm. Korea, and basically, it's just kind of like these are the people that are just like they're gambling they're you know they don't have money what are you going to do for the money money they think money will solve everything you know it's just a reflection of that but then each character is someone you probably know it's like you got the girl that's like trying to figure out her life take care of her family but she's going to do what she has to do and then you have the guy who's like addicted to gambling but he has a kid to take care of but he has you know there's just so many you can see yourself well some people probably see themselves in these characters so and at the end it's like you know, he gets all the money, but he never uses it. It's like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was it's it worth not it? about the money. Yeah. He was all a bad dad, though. He was yeah. a terrible was like, dad. He on the plane. Bro, he was a terrible <laughs> dad. <laughs> Got further. It's like, hey, why, why are you she calling us? She was building us? her yeah. life, though, in the... Uh, um, uh, in America, nah, but like, you get on the plane, bro. You're up. He was right there, and he said, "Wait, I got another mission, bro." Right, <laughs> He's like, um, to end he, it. But then he just wanted to save other people. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like other people type thing. I feel it, but you're up for you go go see your daughter first, yeah, though. Right, like, right. I do. Think that, I, do yeah. I, I read this like TikTok or watch this TikTok. I do think that old man is his dad. Ooh, yeah. did you guys see I that think part? So too. No, no. There, I were, too. there was moments like. They were together, and he's like, this this neighborhood looks familiar. And he was like, yeah, it looks familiar yeah, to me, too. too. Or like, oh, you don't drink chocolate milk? Yeah, I would have slapped my kid or whatever. He's like, yeah, I hit my kid. He didn't drink chocolate milk. It was like. <laughs> and then, like, the birthday thing, right? He was, like, in the marble part. Oh, this is my, it's like my son's birthday is mm-hmm. coming up. Yeah. And then it was, like. In with, the beginning, when the he beginning, did the bank thing, that the, was his birthday. Pin, oh. It was, like, the same day, like, a couple of days, you know? So it was, Damn. like, little hints here and there. That's fire. I see it in a whole new way. I was can't, I was ready for a bunch of jokes, but I like that we got really serious with it. No, no, no. I loved it. I was, I was gonna. No, no, no. I was gonna go left. So I'm glad I didn't start I like after you. If, if, I, if I ran into a duck Sue, bro, I was, bro. I had to toss hands with him first night. It's not going. It's not going down like that. Which one is that again? Um, the the bully. Oh, oh yeah. Nah, bro. He was so good. He was thriving. That girl was so annoying. She was so good at being annoying. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Great, great <laughs> actress as well. But like, she was damn, to finesse that, that role. Everybody. everybody. Oh yeah. wow. There's Simon what? is in love with that the girl, oh, yeah. the model girl. He's <laughs> yeah. like, oh my god. But I like, what's his face? You need to slap me. What's his face? <laughs> <laughs> So in the fine. beginning, she'd be talking oh, about the Oh, Cuddy. Oh, the yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, slap me. Yeah. In the car, yeah. slap me too. Oh, I love uh, Junho or, or Jinho. I, I think. was so I'm, proud you know the names. I'm sitting yeah. here describing yeah. it. Like, okay, look no, at you. Nah. No, yeah, that's my shit. Like, I, I love it all. Like, um, yeah, man, that's my dude. He uh, he was out here about to thwart the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> how, how far do you think you guys would have made it? I'm not playing the game. I'll put that. You're not out playing there the right game. Now. Scary ass. Yeah. No, once I, once I left good. the first time, I would not Money come ain't back. worth it like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would leave. I wouldn't come they back. Oh, I'm definitely not coming back. The first time when they left, I was like, no, nah, I'm. Coming we would back. have to play red light, green light. No, nah, because if bro slapped me in the beginning, the first game, <laughs> oh, true. I'm up and pull on. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, like. Wow, you really slapped the fuck out of me for the hunter bands. Right. There's this theory that if he had picked the other color, he would have been those red in those. That, ooh, yeah. we were talking about yeah. that the other day. Damn, yeah. because we were wondering like, how did that they shit get look chosen, heavy? Right? Yeah, I wonder yeah. how they got there. You know, yeah. those people that work for them. Um, odd jobs. That's yeah, a Craigslist job. Uh, 
throughout the series, they were talking about previous Squid Games. Oh, do you think you just so sign up? It's just a long, uh, like, it's it's probably a long-time yeah. thing that has been going on in the underworld of the upper class. Like, mm-hmm. that shit's weird. I'm like, ugh. It's so funny because I feel like I've looked at all, like, the research because I was, like, so, like, into the messaging and stuff. But you know that scene, the weird, when there was, like, a whole bunch of different um, rich people, it was, like, the white people that came yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. said it was kind of, some of it was inspired by Trump, which really? makes so much sense now. Yeah. yeah. VIPs. Ooh. Yeah. That made me feel, but I was like, why did they, did they not have budget for good actors for the those kind of people? Because they suck. Oh, they suck. <laughs> bro was just horny, bro. The whole time, he was losing money, he just got horny. <laughs> no, man. He was down bad. Um, Great movie. I mean, it was, show. it was, that was, yeah, that was an amazing show. 10 I, out of 10 Squid Games. I found it on the shuffle, too. Oh, really? Yeah, like on a random, like, uh, Netflix shuffle. They blessed me. But you, if you watched it with the voiceovers, I'm judging. People um, were watching yeah, with the Eng- English stuff. Eng- you did that? Yeah. Well, I was why, reading. Why did, you, why did you watch it? With, I'm just curious. Uh, because it, it was just how it came on. I just oh. have it. I didn't, because the I'm, translation's really different. If, well, even well we, re- words, oh, we read it, yeah, and well, we well, find well. that English is annoying because everything in Korean was very short yeah. and to the point. I was like, yeah. there's a bunch of words. No, I meant like, you know the people who do the English voiceover. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant. It's okay to like read the subtitles. That's uh, what I meant. I mean, the people who aren't reading anything, they just have an English person. Oh, no, it. I couldn't do I'm that. I'm like, what the heck? Tavares <laughs> got, the only reason I use subtitles is because of him, because yeah. he roasted me. And then he sent me this uh, meme that was like, if you can't uh, read and watch things, you you slow. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, sometimes for me, like when I watch anime, I put I put the dub. Like, yeah. Some people gonna crucify me for that, but like it's because I be doing something while I'm watching. You know what I mean? I feel so the I same way. This is a safe this space. This I is mean, a safe uh, space. Dub watchers, it's okay. Like yeah. we're good. The, dub is doing like, way better. It's not like W for kids tune like dub. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. It's, this is like actual paid professional. Uh, nowadays, with with, yeah. with uh, sometimes everything. the voice don't be matching though. I'm like, mm. what is this yeah, voice? no, Netflix is foul. <laughs> like they they hire people off the streets, <laughs> <laughs> dead ass. Like that's why I'd be like, bro, you guys ain't throwing no money over here in Washington. Like, right? Y'all be making shows about us, but not with us in it. They should have you as a voice yeah. person. You know, I've been. Uh, I've been trying. <laughs> now, actually, I haven't been trying. Like the well, voice acting would be super. cool. What would you want to voice act? Though. What's that? What would you like if Dream Job out the gate? Oh, who calls MC, you? MC of a Shonen Jump uh, anime. Okay. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Yeah, I would be the English dub for the for Shonen Jump MC. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'd be out here. Yes. Um, I feel like he's already done that. No, no like, uh, I feel like it too. <laughs> uh, no, I definitely have a long like history of like love for like cartoons in general. Mm-hmm. And then when um, I got into anime like third grade, it was a jump from there. I never read manga, but, uh, like, anime for me really hit. Like, I was like, oh, I, I actually, like, relate to this shit. Um, I'll never forget the first time I watched Naruto, you know? <laughs> shit like that. It's just, like, um, <laughs> like times that I times that I love, you know? It kind of shaped me because, uh-huh. uh, like, I get inspired from, like, watching shit like that yeah, um, yeah. creatively. Tavares really ran like that, though, in, during Naruto. Yeah. <laughs> Can you be here for Halloween? Um, cool. Believe it. Uh, do it. I, I <laughs> would. I've never. Why you never, look at me? I, I've never cosplayed before. Rocket. Uh, it's Halloween. I know. Yeah, I know. It's the costume. I'm performing that night anyway. So. Uh, sure. Oh. You perform. Uh, they, can can you elaborate on that? Just just so that our audience can tap in with yeah, you and, uh, and watch you. Groovies. Uh, it's a secret location. You can go lock in a ticket right now. Um, but I'm performing at Toe Jam, opening up for Slime Cito and uh, Celio Cho. So, um, yeah, come tap in with us on Halloween you pay night. Me 100, I'll let you guys meet him. <laughs> Tino, That's my job. Literally, it's like, it's like smooth, smooth will be like, bro. What the That's hell? That's my whole jug. That's my f- like my whole goal in life is to be like the person that like taxes people to talk to yeah. Tavares. <laughs> hey, bro. I'm gonna be doing that because this is so weird. I never thought I'd be in this space where people would come up to me like, "Are you like? Can I take a picture?" And someone's always like, "Oh yeah, you can come yeah, meet her." Like, and I was just like, "This is so weird." <laughs> 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 Ten dollars. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> shots, cash? round of oh, shots. Let me check in, check in with the star real quick. <laughs> I'm about to try to charge him 50 bucks. <laughs> he looked like he got a Rolex on this. <laughs> See if he nah, got the 50 nah, auto. Play right here again, 150. <laughs> <laughs> he was pressing. Like. 
Um, but yeah, how I that's what I'm curious about. How has it been like getting stardom? Because we were talking about it before you came that like you've been able to like grow help businesses in a real way and like add to add value, add importance, highlight in like a very organic and like very pure way. But also it comes with like sort of like a celebrity where you <laughs> launched into like um I don't know, star status to me. Cause like uh I've met a lot of people. You were the only person I've been nervous to like oh my God. talk to. Just because like you've you've broken a threshold that I feel like most don't get to and still be around their like homies. Mm-hmm. So like I think that's like a really like cool thing and that's like to me a celebrity in their own right. So like how has it been gaining it or like do you feel like you are or like how do you feel about it's it? It's so weird when we talk like when people bring this up. I feel like an outer body experience cuz I feel like sometimes I look at myself like like am I? Like it's just so weird, you know? Yeah. Um I always remind myself like always be humble and like anything that I do is just lead with your heart. And I think that's gotten me far, you know, I always yeah. feel like, which sometimes when you lose your heart, you get very, like, you get hurt easily. But for me, it's gotten me far where I just, I care a lot about people. I care a lot about my community. I don't forget where I'm from, from the south end of Tacoma. It's super diverse, like, immigrant parents. They work so hard to get, for me to be here in this country. Like, yeah. I was born here, and I feel like I just never forget everything that I've worked hard for. Um, it's, it's weird because I'm like, Part of it's like, oh my gosh, I can't, I've always dreamt of this moment. And yeah. then now we're here and I'm like, this is wild. And I love meeting people. And I like, we'll be at a bar and they'll be like, come up to me like, I just love your mission and values. I just love what you I do. Know. And we're just like, <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much. No, so cool. But it's like being, I want to use social media for good. I think people tend to think it's like clout and things like that. But yeah. clout doesn't last forever. It's yeah. like, what is, what is going to last? It's like me helping these people, this community. They remember that for the rest of their lives, and I feel like that's the impact that I want to do. Like, if I was to die today, did I do good? And then I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I did my best. I did whatever I could, and um, it just brings me a lot of joy to kind of help people. And you know, not even that. I feel like when I hear people's stories, it kind of inspires me to do better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I remember my friends, and like I never want to be that person where I just move forward and never forget where I come from. I want to be an inspiration for a lot of people who are in a place where they're like, they don't have people who look like me who are in these spaces. You know, I work for a corporate company as a nine to five and then I do my food stuff, but it's like yeah. be, being able to juggle <coughs> both, like that's a lot. It is. But I never had someone to look up to like that. So I just want to be that person for other people. That's beautiful. She's real, yo. She's real. <laughs> <laughs> I've always seen someone as a star. Yeah. I've always felt when I was little, I was like, I think I'm meant to be a star, which is crazy. I was yeah. like, I feel like I was meant to do something more. I, I just felt it in my heart. But I thought, going to college, get a corporate job, this is what it is. And yeah. I lost my dream. I was singing, and then I was like, maybe this singing thing isn't going to get me far. Then I lost myself. And then when Simon quit his 9 to 5 and was like, I'm going to be an artist, I was like, dude, this is going to be hard. But like, I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support you. So yeah. he did it. But I watch him grind every day. You end up working 24-7 not just sitting at her desk, but he was so happy. Even at his lowest points, he's like, I'm so happy I get to create every day. And I'm just like, so inspired by that. So when this food stuff happened, I was like, wow, I can dream again. Like, it's not just this job. I can do what I want. And at this moment, I was like, I never thought, oh, wow, you can have your own food show. One yeah. day. Like, I never thought that could happen. But now when I speak it out loud, I'm like, this could possibly happen one day. And I, just, yeah. I lost that moment. But when I see him doing his thing, I'm like, dude, like, we're both doing it. It's a really great moment at this time because yeah. there's times I was just like, I was like, Simon, like, this is hard. This, yeah. Like, this art thing, like, when is it going to work? I know. <laughs> I was excited for her to find her thing, though. Because like, yeah. I've known she's always, like, had something and all she did was, like, the nine to five. And yeah. like, I know that she could express herself in different ways. She just didn't know what it was. Yeah. And when the food thing came, I was like, that's you. Like, run with it. You know, I've always, like, encouraged that. And it's just dope to see her, like, grow, like, crazy. Like, yeah. And then people, like, coming up to her, it's like, it, it excites me because I know, like, I've always thought of her as that, right? Yeah. Like, but she didn't know herself for a minute. Like, I lost myself. Yeah. I was like, you know, you think that this job, is having a consistent paycheck is what's important. But then yeah. you realize you forget your passion projects, which makes you happy. And I can say right now, because I have the thing outside of work, I work better at work because I'm so happy. Even if I had a shitty day, yeah. I have this thing that makes me happy outside of work. So working is fine. Yeah. Um, but luckily, they all are great. Um, but I think 
it's just wild to think like I'm just I don't want to just talk about food, but who makes the food? Who's the people behind it? People yeah. tend to just not see the the people who get the recipes from their mom or people who travel across the world and get it from you know their family, and it's just so much more interesting. The food tastes better when you know the people who are making it. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that was, a, <laughs> that was a, like that was a beautiful. <laughs> I have to give another round of applause. That, yes. was, that was like a really beautiful moment. That's why you watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, now you go. I just want to touch on what you just said because I think that like resonated with the room because we wanted to step in that light as well. We wanted we, you. You definitely uh, helped us like aspire to be like a platform such as very true so uh in in this room at the groovy tapes we love giving people their flowers so like yes. you guys rightfully so like you've cemented yourselves in this in this community to to be able to re represent and be proud of where you're from and um show people like what's really good so man uh this is just me babbling i'm like thank you man for pulling up because this is fire yeah this is amazing all, especially man. for y'all like i think it's dope to have you know people in the community do this podcast i said it before very consistent i'm like mm. i think of like strategy and you guys are killing it but it's mm. like being able to show representation like diversity in this space is yeah. dope as fuck especially from washington people think you gotta move to la you gotta move to new york yeah. you're from here right. hometown like that's what's dope about you it don't that's why everybody over there is moving over here right. like yeah. guys we yeah. get it through our heads that like our 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 northwest corner of the the United States is dope as fuck. Mm -hmm. Not that, only that, but I, f I feel like we have the re I feel like we have the resources mm -hmm. to rival any like rival any pop in city outside of New York probably just because mm -hmm. the food diversity in New York can't really match. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like the only thing Washington doesn't feel like it has is representation. Like from mm -hmm. people who are fr really from Washington. Mm -hmm. I feel like that disconnect of people coming here, getting a little pop in and like moving and just like showing face and not really claiming home or not even going home mm -hmm. gives people that like, fuck, like Washington will never be in L.A. or New York or Houston, you know, like we will never be those places. But I feel like you can drive anywhere in Washington and find talent like For sure. anywhere. So like I feel like I, I really, truly feel things like what you do, what we allow uh people into the space to like just feel accomplished and feel like they've they've hit the mountaintop even though that the world may not recognize it because as far as like homegrownness we try to provide that like that like you've you've done a lot like people forget that they've done a lot to make like even a splash in a city that really doesn't have a really big pond so like I feel like most people um should use these things as like we got we got ways to go but we have something um, it's a community. Yeah. You know? Like, it's like we're helping other people, but we're helping each other. Not just being like, this is about me, and I'm about to do my thing, and then I'm leaving, you know? Yeah. So I think it's dope. Thank you for, like, allowing us to come in this space. Because Sam and I, like, people see us together all the time, but yeah. I don't think people talk to us together, like, in, like, a... Like, yeah. 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 But very interested in our lives. I feel like they're very interested. Oh, in yeah. Me. I do say, I'm like, me and you, we put something on together, we gonna sell it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw a, uh, I'm waiting for like you guys just the personal parties that you guys throw with your friends I wish were like bigger invitey things cause like you just see it on the gram and it's just like that yeah, look like that look fun like the, our emo party was fun I was I was like it's fun people talk about theme parties but then you know you get scared people don't dress up yeah. like, everybody dresses up it is so it's fun it's fire yeah. yes you guys can definitely come to the next sure. one. Oh, you got and you guys look like you throw it really well and like the plant like even the 90s party where I, I saw Cam in a do-rag and just like a oh. big ass like <laughs> shit like that I feel like uh Washington just needs to see more just because we we feel like we're out of the things that are actually cool and it's like really I have good friends. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> I mean I have good friends but I hear it's tough to find good friends here. Yeah, people get, like people always feel like they can't find like a group of friends. Like people are like oh, I wish I had more friends but even if you have two friends that are like amazing you can do your thing, you know. It's popping. I, I really only have two art. No, let me not say that. Let me, the, my real friends. I know, he was about to make Bro, a lot of people I was at home. So real upset. So, <laughs> so upset for Don't content. Even do that. I'm not even going to do it for content. Like, just to, like, just to make a laugh. Corey has a lot of friends. I, I don't. I love that. I don't, I wouldn't say a lot of friends. I have a lot of people I, f I genuinely fuck with because right. I try to get genuine energy from them. I have like a niche group of friends 
and a lot of people are like I should like I show love to. That's how I feel. Um, yeah, just because I'm not like I want to see everyone grow outside of the pond they think they're in. Mm-hmm. So I'm never like fuck you because I don't really know you. But like the people I call my friends are people I can call and do favors. Uh, will do favors for me and vice versa. I never feel away doing favors for. Um, yeah. I lost my train of thought. Oh, no worries. Um, that's a filthy cause, Pen. Uh, I wanted to ask about your guys' thoughts on the, the rise of the South Sound and, like, how that's affected you. Um, what is that? Uh, Tacoma and, like, oh. uh, you know. Do you know Simon's from Linwood? Oh, you're from the he's, North? But he's straight from Manila. He's an Im- mm-hmm. He was an immigrant. Oh. Yeah. I immigrated to New York, and then that was my America, right? When I Fire. Fired. And then I moved out to Linwood when I was like 12, 13. Oh, so you're a New Yorker by like, yeah. oh. I love New York. That's, that's fire. When I came out here, I was like, this is a ghost town. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he said when he saw the Statue of Liberty, he was like, America. I right? was America, man. It was like the real immigrant stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, no, Island where you ride in the boat and yeah. like, you see the Statue of Liberty, is America. It was, that was that kind of same feeling, but. That's yeah. fine. He's uh, always doing this thing where I complain about food. He's like, babe, I was poor. Are you kidding me? Like, you're complaining. <laughs> you don't want this when I was in the Philippines. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Gosh, okay, I'll eat his dad it. His dad already. He's like, he's like, all right. Like, I'm sounding like my parents. You know? Oh, my gosh. But that's, that's still a beautiful habit to have, never for, never forgetting when things were different. Yep, yep, for uh, sure. Um, but you're talking about Tacoma? Uh, either or, I, I the, the I'm really curious great. about New York, but yeah. we can talk about the common too. Well, what, what, I don't know what you're asking. Oh, um, I mean, basically, uh, I, I've been saying this for a while. I think Tacoma is going under a renaissance right now. They're truly like, like not even holding their own. They're like surpassing levels that uh, I've seen in the community. Um, that I like wish. Seattle would mm-hmm. um, they're breaking down like doors and barriers within like themselves and even outside uh, outside communities um, which uh, is like th- something that I've like been I'm been telling everybody put it on notice like like besides the me being from Seattle I'm born and bred Seattle like like I'm from here I love Seattle but like I grew up with the notion of like, oh, Tacoma's too far. Mm. Like, there's a, there's definitely like a long bridge between the two communities. How can I connect? Uh, this past year, that's all been blown away, mm-hmm. um, and it, there's been like a certain shift or change within that community where I'm like, what's going on out there? Like, that's really like changing the ways of the people. That's impacting someone in the south end of Seattle, like. I'm in I'm in Skyway and I'm like, bro, Tacoma's creators are like literally popping off every day. They don't stop. And it's so inspiring to see. Like we get love from like Umi and like we get we get love from like Colin and Baca. Like a lot of our friends like we've been forming uh, from this past year has been like south of the way. So I'm I was just uh, wondering on like your guys' thoughts on like how that's been like shaping uh, what you've been going on with. I think being born in South Tacoma, like, we've always been a community. Like, I feel like we call it, it's like, it feels very homey, like, we're a family. Mm-hmm. And though we're not as big as Seattle, we all know each other. We fuck with each other. Like, me and Rasan, I've known him since I was, like, eight, seven years old. Mm-hmm. So it's so funny that we'll sit in a room like, Scoob. Nope, I don't call him Scoob. But we, like, sit in a room and he'll, and it's like, I was though, like we're in different, <laughs> though we're in different places, he's always, like, I show him love, like, dude, I see you're doing a rapper thing. But he'll be like, Tina, you know, you're the Starbucks queen. You're doing your thing. Like, you know, with so much love. Because a lot of us nice have known each other for, like, 10 plus years. We just grew up together. But we don't forget where we're from. We don't forget each other, though we're, like, in different places. And I think it's, like, we always find ways to support each other. And there's so much creative people that are just doing their thing, but always, like, it's, like, networking. It's, like, we all, we never forget we're from Tacoma, but we'll network from different places. Um, and, like, having ETC in Tacoma, like, having a streetwear store, they just, like, such a representation of, like, the creative people that are from Tacoma, yeah. you know? Umi and Perry, like, the, the way they design stuff, the way they always represent, like, when they, like, gave me my South End shirt, I was, like, this is so dope, like, being able to represent cities that are close to Tacoma. So, yeah. um, and, like, even, like, Enum Claw, like, all that shit, like, it's dope to see mm-hmm. people being like, I'm gonna make a band, like, I don't know, they're just, it's just, the way I feel with people from Tacoma, we just feel like such a family, we feel so close. Yeah. That's, That's why I love Tacoma, like, when I, 
met people from Tacoma because I, I never was out there until I met Tina. Yeah. But like, I just felt like they just had so much love for each other, you know what I mean? Like, because they all knew each other from since they were kids. Yeah. So it's like, I moved around a lot, so I never got to, like, grow up with my friends like that. And it's like, they really all show love. Like, they never forget where they're from. Like, yeah. They're proud to be there. It's like, and it's, it's dope. There's so much creative people out there just supporting each other, so. Yeah, Tacoma is, like, a really beautiful place. And it, mm-hmm. like, like Tavares, it took me until, like, last year really to one start going to Tacoma frequently because my grandfather lived out there but I was never really into what Tacoma was going on like I spent a lot of time in Tacoma and not like mm-hmm. not interacting with real like Tacoma in what do you what's Tacoma the people? Tacoma people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like to come around as like an adult and like find find more like love and like like really like love to like I've grown a love Tacoma and like I'm I've been trying to like uh photograph Tacoma because you guys are going through what Seattle's been going through for the last like 10 years so a lot of like the things that are important to people from Tacoma are getting like get getting rid of and like they're like reconstructing so I've been trying to go out there and document and like figure out real Tacoma while it's still like Real Tacoma. It's like I hate the like when people think like oh Tacoma is like not fun. It's like lame. oh it's like, lit. People don't give people like chances, you know. Tacoma's lit. Like mm-hmm. I've we were drunk out there after a Glen show till like two in the morning. Like that's the that's probably the most fun yeah. I had for, this for summer. The Hilltop General, bro. <laughs> drunk wrestling, drunk wrestling. It was, it was <laughs> bro, hella my fun. Slam me in the middle of the road. <laughs> Slam both of us. And like three cars like stopped and they're like ah. I was, like, I was like, Brandon, I'm too drunk for this. And it probably didn't even hurt. No. It hurt the next day. Like, I was sore. Oh, my gosh. Um, I wanted to uh, ask about you two as, like, a couple. Do you guys get a bunch of, like, uh, people asking for couple advice or just, like, things of that nature just because they see such a thriving and healthy couple? I mean, I think people do ask some things, but, like, I don't know. I, I'll let you speak on that. but I mean, I think people, I don't want to be like couple's goals. I yeah. hate that. Because yeah. I feel like everyone has their own relationship with their significant other. Mm-hmm. But I think people turns up turn to us like, how do you guys make it work, you know? Mm-hmm. And I always tell Simon, like, I think it's good to build a friendship with the person you're with. Like, we're yeah. best friends. If you cut the romance out, so much fun, you know? And I think yeah. that's super important to build that friendship before you actually start this, like, relationship or mm-hmm. fall in love and things like that. But I think we both believe, like, I really don't like when people say, like, oh, my God, you complete me. No. Like, I am my whole self. You are your whole self. And we're a great team. Yeah. Because if I was to lose you, not like that, I'm going to still do me. And I yeah. think you should do you. Mm-hmm. And I think having your identity, like, I have my thing, you have your thing, and we're thriving together. I don't I don't want you to feel like you need me right. and I need you. And I think that's what works between we us. Just try to grow together, whatever it is, like, what we want to do. Like, it's just support, right? Mm-hmm. Like. We just try to support each other as much as we can. It's like just grow together. Yeah. We never really see each other. It's like I need you to help me this. Like yeah. I can't do it type of deal. Like mm-hmm. we just could try to encourage each other type yeah. of deal. So and it's like always about like when I'm doing my food stuff, he's the one sitting there recording my hand model. He's always there helping me. Yeah. His merch stuff, I'm like I'll I'll market it. I'll like mm-hmm. I'll post it. Like whatever strategy we need to do, you want me to. You know, we're, we're going to table stuff. Like, it's, like, funny to start from the beginning. We used to table yeah. at, like, events and, like, sell his prints and posters. And I'm, like, I'm going I'm to sit there with you. Like, mm-hmm. how many hours we're going to sell this stuff together? And that's what makes it so special because whatever we do, we're here for each other. And it's just mm-hmm. a great friendship. He's my bestie. Yeah. It's Thanks. so fun. That was fire. Uh, what was it like uh, doing the paint, the live painting at the Seahawks game? Um, that was crazy. Yeah, I... I was nervous because I've never. It was like a time limit. So oh like really? Two hours. Yeah, it was a two. I've never Damn. painted two hours. Like usually it takes me like 10, 14 yeah. like, just to even get a painting. But yeah, I definitely had to practice and all that. But it was a great experience. Like it was my first time. My my parents ever went to a Seahawks game. So like oh, fire. that was all priceless to me. Like seeing them being able to like see me as an artist. Like you know being highlighted. Like yeah, I just wanted to see them. You know, like 
be in a great mood, like about yeah. what I'm doing and not to worry as much. So like, yeah, that was, that was priceless. That was pr- yeah. Cause Simon's was super dope. introverted. So when was it? Was was G-Scott, <laughs> what is his name? Yeah, G-Scott. He was like, G-Scott. all right, Simon Legaspi, come on stage. Give, my, <laughs> give the mic to Simon. He's like, uh, hi guys, uh, I'm, I'm Simon. And I'm like, speak up, speak up. You know, he's all shy. It was so funny. <laughs> Just gotta, so I got to get out of my comfort zone. So like, yeah. you know, it was a good opportunity. So I was like, I just gotta do it. Uh, that's amazing. It looked really cool, and I really loved the uh, the painting that you made. Um, yeah, yeah. He had to give it away, um, and it's like they had to answer a Seahawks question, but the girl heard it, the answer from someone else, and she uh, just said, I was like, "That's not fair." But cheating. <laughs> Out here cheating for free art. Whoever got that piece, you know. Mm-mm. I just want to give a shout out behind us. This is Simon's art. Like that's this the fucking oh, yes. They've been supporting him for yeah. so long. That is crazy. Like just, I, I still bug out when I see my art in different places. Like, it's wild to me. I don't know. Like, I never get like used to it. Yeah. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I, I, I remember when they, uh, they uh, got, uh, he got the pieces. Um, you got that one first, right? I think I bought them at the same time, but I framed that one first. Did you go to, like an event? Buy- no, oh, I online. found Simon online. Oh. Uh, when you did the the po- uh, the photo of you in the orange like uh, chair. Oh yeah, we went to the selfie museum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, okay. So I don't, I don't know. Through probably through one of the homies, like I saw them post you, and I was like, okay, I clicked on the page, and then I saw your art, and I was like, oh shit, I need to buy some art. Um, just because we were building out the the podcast, and I was like, you know, I need some like, I want some local art, mm-hmm. and then I just fell in love with your work, and then I've I've just kind of been just obsessing over like what you've been posting and your your curation and just your growth and what you're working on and just going between digital and physical, I was just like, yeah, I need, I, one, I need it, but, like, I'm genuinely a fan. So that's why, like... Oh, I appreciate so cool. that. Yeah. That's super cool. I love, like, I love art. And, like, uh, even when I, we were DMing way back when, I was like, this is, like, I'll have these forever mm-hmm. just because I know just the capability and, like, how much you put into it and just what it what it will mean. And like when, when I did say you will be our cause and things like that, I really genuinely meant it just because that's how talented you are. And thank you. That's just so to, cute. That's crazy. <laughs> and, just, your, and your mom has a piece. Yeah. Know. Like uh, having an original is something different. You know what I mean? Like when someone requests an original painting, it's like they really want this art, like coming yeah. from me. And it's, it's, it's a whole different feeling, but I just love all this, like the support from the community. Cause you like stuff that, I hear you saying that stuff, like, it trips me out because I'm just trying to do my thing yeah. and, like, create, but it really affects people, like, the art that I'm making. Like, I have people telling me, like, what this piece, like, meant to them and all that, and it's, like, I don't think that far. It's just, like, I'm just trying to get my ideas and yeah. express myself, and the fact that it's, like, hitting people in different ways this is super dope. Like, that's what makes it fun for me, you know? that would that was make that was that's what makes me personally love it just because like i know it's from like a pure standpoint it's not too like you selling your art for monetary reasons is a bonus that's that's just the approach i've always felt like mm-hmm. when i like was buying from you and investing and, and i was just like this is not a person that's like money hungry and will once the ig gets to a certain level he'll just like all right fuck prince i'm on like now i'm a rapper or, or things like that so i feel like uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm switching. But people don't know this, but um, before I met Simon, he was selling T-shirts. Like he has been touching like the merch stuff for a long, like mm. printing himself, yeah. like, like buying hella stuff, and like it's still like stocked up and everything like that. So his like merch stuff, like this isn't new. It's like yeah. he's been doing it, but now it's like he's adding art and merch. Yeah. It's really cool to see. I wanted to ask about those UW days and designing for, uh, yeah, I did, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you yeah I, did, I did my homework. Uh, what was it like designing for UW? Uh, it, was, it was cool. Like, so I just, when I was a kid, I didn't really know. Like, I, being an artist wasn't like a thing for me to become a job, like, you know, as a career. It was, I wanted to do art. Yeah. But it was like, what can I do to like get in that realm and create, but still, you know, go through the nine to five in the yeah. world. So it was like graphic design was that for me. And like, I went to school for design and like UW was really like the place where I grew. Yeah. Like I, I wanted that graphic design title. Right. So like, that's where I felt like I learned a lot of like skills as far as like believing yourself and trying to like really 
like uh, climb up a ladder. Yeah. So like Yuda was really a huge part of like my career as a, as an artist and yeah. a designer. And like I loved it. It was crazy because like you know like UW is a big industry and like, especially in the athletic like it's it's a whole different vibe. Yeah. And like you're working with sports and like just being able to see my like like designs being put up on a stadium and it was like it's like those are surreal moments for me. And I was like you know like it felt good. You yeah. Know? I was creating and it's like it's being put up in, in on like the windows and like you know I'm, I'm making posters and like it's being sent out everywhere. Oh, that's like, fire. It's just it was a it was a really cool feeling, but um, yeah, like I kind of just lost touch of it because everything became repetitive. Like every yeah. season, you know, you're pretty sort much kind of thing. doing the same thing. Yeah. And, like I, I was losing kind of my creative side in it. Yeah. And, like when you're designing, it's like a lot of people's opinions go into your work. Yeah. And, like for me, I just want to just really just get, get your shit on. And I just want to do it my way. You yeah. Know? And they just started that feeling started creeping in. And then um, that's kind of just where I took off my into my whole like painting. Oh, nice! Journey. But yeah, U Dub was like I I started there as an intern, no pay. Just I just wanted to get in, yeah. let me get my foot in the door, and like it led to like a part time gig. Oh, fine. And then from that part time, I would just try to like, you know, I would work there till three in the morning. If they needed me to just so I can get a job. Like, yeah, you know I mean? like that was like where I started everything pretty much, and then I built my way up to like become the graphic designer. And then um, I did that for like, I mean, I total I worked there for like almost three, four years. Oh, that's fire! So it was a hell build, yeah. I really try to build it and try to like yeah. climb up and get that title. And it was like, it felt like a good accomplishment. Yeah, you know what I mean? like that sounds that sounds like it was, especially when you like you earned it. Like you came in as an intern, like to the like a uh, head graphic designer or just yeah. the lead so graphic. I was, you know, I had that main title. Like, yeah, creative director, but I was. You were the designer. one that had to actually make the ideas happen. That's fire. It's dope to know that like, he can do graphic design and he can paint. So yeah. when he adds that both, I'm like, I'm so lucky to have you. But, like, Simon's really good. Like, he can make an empty cup have water in it. I'm like, how did you Oh, do that's that? fire. Like, that was all, so like, good. from Udo. So yeah. I learned all that so from, good. like, Udo making posters and, like, making things, like, from nothing, really. Like, how can I make this for a player look like a beast yeah so it's like photoshop work all that it's all it was all fun for me oh that's fire so what was it like uh collaborating on your first uh merch uh release like simon is just so talented when it comes to just i think having his background of doing merchandise and designer yeah. and like the sweet life stuff went crazy like and i think it was kind of shift when he started shifting his art into merch and working with printers and like being able to kind of understand like shipping things out like i was so grateful to the point where we just released my merch because he had already learned all that stuff. Yeah. And like, shout, like I wouldn't be able to make this stuff without him. And he designed everything. But it was like, there was a moment I, I was know. like, I want to do something where it's more than just food, right? So yeah. I was sitting there naming stuff like, eat, like, eat food, like, eat good. And I was like, and he was like, what, like, we should do Washington foodies. I was like, that's kind of corny. Like, I don't want to make anything corny. That's like, I want yeah. to wear every day. I was like, we should make it subtle. So when we came up with eat good, stay hungry, I was like, I feel like everyone that I meet is so, like, they're motivated, they're hustling, but don't be comfortable, don't stay in one place, you got to stay hungry, you got to keep mm -hmm. going, like, eat good, live life, like, life is beautiful, yeah. but also just keep grinding, and that's really what it was, and I was like, and it relates to food, it was genius, but yeah, I always told him, idea. I was, he's just like, you're so, like, colorful, it should be, like, pastel, you know, yeah. and I was like, I am colorful, and I wanted to make something where, you know, there was a sea foam green where, you know, a lot of people could wear that, you know, not all men wear, like, pink and lavender. Yeah. But I was like, you know, and I also wanted something where it kind of represents me, which is, like, a bright color. And then we wanted to throw on a bag. But it was crazy because I was like, I don't really know foodies making merch. You yeah. Know? But I wanted to be more than that. But working with him, it was just so much easier. And he was teaching me how to, like, fold. We were folding things together. It was such a humbling moment to sit in our condo with all our shirts and, like, fold stuff, ship. We're so tired, you know. He was up later than I am because I have to work the next day. Yeah. He, I'd wake up and everything's already packed. So, super, super grateful. Um, and it just went crazy. And it's like so dope because, you know, I see his stuff sell out. I see our stuff sell out, and we're just like, I always, I always say this: it's like we've supported our community. And when I needed them most, they like 
they, it yeah. came back tenfold. Like, they support us. And yeah. Not even just that. Like, we never want anyone to buy something just because they like us. Like, yeah. you like our stuff. Like, us. you love it. You want to wear it. That's why you buy it. And, that, and, like, seeing our stuff, like, people send stuff like, I saw your merch in Hawaii or in New York <laughs> and all this stuff. I was like, this is wild. That's like, fire. For us to be able to do this, just us two, like, yeah. normal people at home, like, to create things that people love, like, that's so dope. But without the design and artist, like, I, can, I wouldn't be able to do it. And, I mean, like, Tina does... Like, she usually checks off my stuff, too, because I'd be having a crazy idea, but I'll check in with her, like, this, is this too crazy? Or yeah. is, like, you know, we, <laughs> we, we bounce ideas yeah. off like that. And, like, when she came up with, like, the ego to stay hungry, it just, my part was just to make it, a, like, into a physical thing. Yeah. Like, she's really good at thinking of, you know, like, sayings and words and things like that that just resonates with people. So, like, we just try to work together and, like, her strengths and my strengths, like, try Like, to, I'm a good marketer. Yeah. Like, I can say social media marketing I can do that. Top tier. Yeah, top tier. Algorithm, time, I do that for a living. So when it comes to marketing and stuff, I'm always talking to him like, all right, we should post this day. Like, let's look at the graph. Like, what time? It's really deep. I'm like, what time is best that you post? I'm like, okay, let's do 11, 3 p.m. This is going to work out. You should do this day. We, like, strategize. Yeah. Um, And I think what's dope is we always try to be authentic. I think people tend to think too hard sometimes, but just be you. Be you, share your personality, and, like, never fake it. And when it comes to our photo shoots, it's like a lot of the times it's just me and Simon at the North Gate like garage, yeah. and it's our iPhone. <laughs> but when Simon edits it, fire! Like oh my gosh, it doesn't look like an iPhone photo. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we shot that yeah. shit. No, it's just us in the garage, just or like taking, in front of a bush. I'm yeah. like, oh, this bush looks nice. It's great. Like, like stand right in front There's of it. There's this photo of us in the green suite. Like we just go like walking in the neighborhood. I'm like, let's do it at this bush. It was like our neighbor's bush. Yeah. We're just posing, and I'm like, how are we supposed to walk by? Like, what are these? What are they doing? But the photos came off fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's amazing, brother. Can they get this? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Now the, the the story is important. We really appreciate you guys sharing that with the the audience. They, I think, uh, it's a healthy dose of like you know, as you said, eat good, stay hungry. You know, that's what. That's what it's all about, and um, for people to actually have, like, a platform to hear your guys' voices on a, another level um, is truly amazing. So, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about when you did your mural last year. Uh, was that your first uh, big mural like that? Yeah, that was my first. It was actually, like, my goal that year to put, like, get a mural up, no oh, matter fire. what it was. Yeah. Like, and it was crazy because it came at the right time. It was literally where the year was about to end. Yeah. And then um, just, like, our homegirl just hit us up. It was like, hey, like, I want a mural. Like, can you just make it, like. Opening just, a restaurant. We're, we're opening yeah. a restaurant. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And it was like, everything just aligns, you know. And it was a super dope experience. She got to help me with it. And, um, yeah, I, it was like, I learned a lot from it because yeah. I've never done it. And it was like, I wanted to experience it just to see. But it's, it's a lot of work. Um, but it was fun. Definitely fun. Like, how long did it end up taking you the the whole mural? Oh, that's fire! It was like a span of eight hour days, right, or ten hour days. We learned so much because it was like the 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 textures of the wall and the paint. It was like the textured walls where you can like texture. So we had to keep redoing it over and over again, and like just trying to figure all that out. Yeah, I'm used to spray paint, so like. If I was going to do a wall, I would normally use spray paint, but it's like it's an enclosed space, and I didn't want to, like, fume it up. And oh, stuff. Yeah. So I had to figure out different different things to make it faster. It was just, like, a good learning experience. It was fun, though. Like, a fun little were challenge. We were like, 4 a.m. painting, but he was, like, big paint in the lines. I'm like, I'm crying. <laughs> 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 no, you did a good job. <laughs> Falling asleep painting. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. Um... I, I've, uh, I, I've, doing my research, I've, I've learned the answer of, like, why you started uh, uh, Washington Foodies and what it's meant to you, but um, what has been the most accomplishing thing doing it over the last year and a half? I honestly think it's the impact that I've made for these businesses and the community. Like, there's so many businesses that was just about to close, and they're, they called me, and they're like, everyone's coming like we have enough money to hire our employees again like you know there's places where they had to fire everyone because they didn't have enough money and then the owners is just the two of them and they couldn't even like they were tired and they didn't have any help and then they're like wow we have enough money to hire people like wow we never had reservations before and now people are coming in you know yeah and i think 
I always want to be authentic. Like, I don't post something I don't fuck with or eat with. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm not the type to put, like, oh, I hate this. But if it's not in the video, I did not like it. Yeah. It's like, I didn't put in the video. But it's it's that. It's, like, the, the community, the people I built. But not even just the, the businesses. It's, like, people are so scared to try new food. Yeah. And, like, when they don't see it visually, they get kind of nervous. So be able to see see it and then they go to the restaurant like i tried a dish i never tried before but because of your video i ate it I yeah. love it. i've never had vietnamese food before or you know i get like random dms like my kid just goes into every restaurant and says hey watch this food <laughs> like or like you've inspired me to like want to do this and that and i think that's like the best thing to be able to touch so many people i think that's what keeps me going that's fire um uh, this is probably one of my last no i don't might not be my last question I was like, we can keep going. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck. Saying that made me forget my last question. Go. <laughs> um, you know, before I take this out or before the court remembers, uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, uh, do you have any advice for any up and coming like creators Came that back. are in the game, just starting? You want to relay some game for them if, well, to the end? I say just like, don't stop you know like the the first thing is like a lot of people get scared to even get started yeah. but once you get through that hump of like just putting anything out that you know feels good to you like just don't quit yeah. because when you quit like it really like then that's the end of it you know if you keep going it'll eventually like build and i think that's like i mean i've gone through so many lows but that's something that i've told myself like to just keep going you know like it, it, and it really it really works like if you do something like more each day like you'll get better at whatever it is and like it just it'll keep building like you don't know where it's gonna take you right and it, it could take time but like it's just the patience and stay resilient like it really is just the resilient part is important because you're gonna hit some lows yeah. you know like mm-hmm. you're creating it's like most of the time no one knows what you're creating and like because yeah. you have your own vision right you gotta make people understand what you're doing and that takes time and like not everyone's going to really connect with it, but eventually yeah. they will because they're going to see, like, you're authentic. Like, yeah. This is your thing. If you keep going, it'll eventually work out. You know? That's beautiful. Yeah, like, I would say nothing worth having comes easy. Like, people mm-hmm. see only the success, but they don't see how many years it takes. Like, it takes a long time. Like, things just don't happen just, like, one year, just boom. Yeah. There's a lot of work that comes into it. And I think, like, it's it's okay to make mistakes. I'd rather do something and take a chance and learn from me fucking up than not doing anything at all because you never want to go back and regret and be like, I wish I would have done this. You know, you have an idea, do it. But also think about, like, what what is your purpose? You know, you create something, but what is your purpose in life? Is it to inspire someone? Is it to make music that people br- brings people together? I think leading with that will always get you far because it's not empty. You don't want to do empty, like yeah. like, projects and things like that. Um, and I also think, you know, networking, meeting people, communicating, it's always good to have a good group of people who, build you know, you build a community. Like, I got you on food stuff, you got me on design. Like, it's like, oh, I'm going to call you because I know this podcast. Like, yeah, like, I'm going to come through because y'all are doing it. Like, we're helping each other. Um, and it's really gotten us far. You know, mm-hmm. we support our community because they support us. And yeah. having that to go back to is so dope. And it's genuine. You don't want to yeah. just, like, support each other and be, you no. know, just for transactional stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Be genuine, like Your actually care, you know, like, yeah, and it's, it'll take you far because it's all about community. Like, yeah. you're nothing without your community. Yeah, facts. It's just you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're just in the box. Like, if you got community, that's like that's what's gonna really like, you know, show you what you got and like, you know, people, people, it'll eventually work out. Like, yeah. and I think even if you make something and you're a little nervous, but if you, even if you create something, you, you think, oh, I think I want a million people to like it or see it. Yeah. If you inspire like two people that are like, I fucking love your shit. Mm-hmm. That is, that is the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. You know, like having all these followers isn't like, you know, it doesn't show like, oh, you're the best thing. Yeah. Ever. But being able, even if you had five followers and they really, truly fuck with you, that is so like, that is success. Like success means so many things. I think that's what's important. Knowing like, you you help one person. That's that's good enough. That's good like, enough. Someone likes yeah. your stuff. Yeah. That's dope. But like, showcase that. Like, be able to broadcast it. You know, don't like hold it inside because you never just want to regret. Like, I wish I, I wish I would have done this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just up here again, Tinder quotes. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's I, it's. It, it's so authentic to like how you guys move and like operate and exist in the space. So I feel like it's, it, it's nice to like 
feel and hear those words coming from people that you like look up to. So like anyone watching, hearing that be like, damn, I really connect with it because it comes from people that live it and like genuinely do it every day. Um, I remembered my question. Uh, your burger was amazing. It's so fire. I'm so glad it's, you it. It was like, I texted to, I was almost about to tweet again, but I had to text <laughs> Tavares and be like, yo, you've had this burger. It was fucking amazing. Why didn't you tell me earlier that it was amazing? Um, what? Yeah, we slid up in there. Yeah, it was it was fucking fire. I'm so um, glad. It was it was so like every time it's it's when you're at this point where I'm at, I'm always like, oh, I have to do something better. Like I I, I like don't want to disappoint people. Like when I don't post food, like I need to keep getting better because I feel like I'm behind or I'm disappointing people. Yeah. But that project, like shout out Jordan Nicholson. Jordan loves life. The best photographer, most talented friend so I have, like Shout out ten big plus homie. million years, and Chef Young helped me create the burger. But that they they were like, "Hey, we want to work with you. It's your, almost your birthday." And Marcus, the owner of Little Woody's, was like, "Let's do something that relates to you." And I was like, "I want to help my community. Yeah. So whatever it is, we got to give back to a nonprofit." So I was like, "We picked Wall Block, which is like will help like families and kids. Like whatever for every burger, we'll amazing. donate meals to that fam like uh, the the community." So. Being able to relate to that and, like, have a burger, which, like, I'm half Vietnamese and Cambodian. I'm really close to my mom, so having a, like, inspired Ben Me burger was, like, yeah. super dope. But Chef Young, it's, like, the, the cilantro aioli is his sauce. He added that in, and then we did the sriracha mayo, and it was dope. But, like, it's crazy. Like I said, like, I don't expect people to go buy stuff yeah. or go do stuff. But when they do, I'm, like, it's I'm shook. But I would never release anything that didn't taste good. No, it was it was fucking bussing. It was like I, I was talking to uh, Trav about it the same day. I was like, bro, I went and had the burger. It was it was amazing. <laughs> I walked in and I was uh, talking about it to the the lady who I was buying in front. I was like, it's dope to like actually like know of the person that you, you're buying their burger. And this this lady was walking up. She's like, damn, he's over here raving about Aww. how it's going out today. I've had two. Uh, <laughs> she's like fuck i feel greedy because I'm like, I'm like no it's like it's, it's really dope because then another two burgers go to the kids exactly you know I mean? it's sad because at the end when everyone's trying to get it they're like dude it's sold out I was, like, I was hurt as soon as when you posted that it was out on ballard uh it was a good thing i was at work so i like slid the white center i was like oh yeah i need that burger and it like lived i ate it on my way back to work it like it lived up to the high like from what I saw on like Instagram, it was like it was much it was much better That'd than be my that. Dream to keep doing stuff like that. I would love that just because like the way you uh, just what I've seen what you've been able to create just off what you like, I would eat it every time. So like more chefs make Tina inspired inspired meals so I can go try them. It's weird to even have this opportunity to do that. You know, I'm shook every time. Like what a burger? Me? What? How? <laughs> I'm still shocked. I don't. I don't know what the next thing is. I'm just like. I'm so grateful. Do you have like a a dream uh, food and like food inspired thing that they could do? Like if any like restaurant could uh, make something inspired by you, do you have like a dream like pizza? Like oh my gosh, I don't know. Bio, yeah. I don't know. That's I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue. No, that was like a. Woo, that was, usually, I can answer anything. Yeah. Cool. That was like. Uh. We'll keep that in the touch. Yeah. You know I mean? we'll, 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 we'll keep that low key. That's just, all. That's just all make Tina a bunch writes. of. Just just make a bunch for her, and then she'll choose Food Network. A, yeah, like. Yes, I want to host a show. Tina, like, I see you being on Food Network. You need if to, I can like, host like a cupcake championship, like. Oh fire! Oh, yeah, we God. have this baker over here and that baker over there. I would. Oh my God! That would be hey, Netflix. A dream. Hey, Netflix, you start all types of food shows. <laughs> you start a bunch of food shows that are kind of mid. Give Tina one. That'll be, be great. Really cool. All right, Washington Groovies. Uh, <laughs> KWJT, you've been grooving with the South. We got Tina, Simon, Corey, Solana. <laughs>